All right, well, good evening. Good evening. And welcome to our grand opening of Orrin C. Smith Elementary School. My name is Brett Ellingson. And I am the proud principal of this magnificent new building right over here. Um, it's kind of funny, when you, when you plan outdoor events in the Pacific Northwest, you're always thinking and praying for good weather. Well, man, we, we nailed it, right? <laughs> we nailed I think this is the hottest day of the year right now. So this is, this is pretty cool. This is really cool. Well, what a special day this is to gather together as, as a community, as a true community, to celebrate the grand opening of Orange Smith Elementary School. You know, we have the, the beautiful Shaw campus is now officially complete. We have our, our wonderful building over here, our Lintot Elementary K2 building, and we have our Orange Smith 3-5 building. If we can get a round of applause for that, that is fantastic. <laughs> and we're, we're really honored and blessed today to have the Shaw family with us today, the Smith family with us today, and representation from the Lintot family as well. So if we could give them a round of applause, please. All right, I have, I have some, uh, some wonderful third, fourth, and fifth graders here that are nervous, but they're going to rock it. They are ready to lead us in the flag salute. So if I could have you guys stand and remain standing, because when the flag salute is over, we're going to have our choir go ahead and sing for us. So please stand. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. They're going to go ahead and tell you quickly what grade they're in and their name. I'm Carly Rasmussen and I'm in fourth grade. I'm Sammy Ames, and I'm in fourth grade. I'm Madeline Bradley, and I'm in fourth grade. I'm Willow Rogerson, and I'm in third grade. Great job, ladies. Great job, guys. You can be seated. That was fantastic. At this time, I want to go ahead and bring up Mrs. Vicki Daniels. Um, Vicki was a former teacher here in Shalis, and she's our current board, Shalis School uh, District Board President. So let's give her a round of applause. Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, I am here to welcome guests and community members. Um, it's an honor and a real humbling experience for me to be able to speak at this dedication today. In fact, I'll do my best to kind of hold it all together to tell you the truth. This tugs at my heartstrings in a variety of ways. 
My husband Danny and I arrived in Chehalis in 1971 for our first teaching jobs. He was at WF West as an English teacher and I was at Ari Bennett for girls physical education, which was then seventh and eighth grade. Kathy Shaw was one of my first students that I had when I came here. The end of the Shaw line, I understand. Um, it was a unique experience with approximately 80 to 85 boys and girls sharing that small gym, each on their own half. Girls over here, boys over here, and Kevin Smith was with the boys over here. He was also here in my early days. It was a tight squeeze, if you can imagine. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to teach in every building in our district. I was the in-school suspension supervisor at uh, the high school. Uh, I took over a maternity leave for Carrie Abbott, our former um, physical education teacher, when uh, she had her daughter, Kirsten, who is now Mrs. Apperson at Lintot Elementary. When I ended my career in 2005, back at Ari Bennett, but teaching second and third graders health and fitness with classes of 25 or less in the same great big gym. We had a lot of fun. It's all perspective. 80 middle schoolers, 25 little people. And I did substitute a day at Cascade. That's how I worked there. But I'm telling you all this because I personally saw the need for new schools. But how did we get them? How did we go about it? Through an amazing, generous community. There's a history I'm aware of, starting with WF West, who gave a million, dollar, million dollars for scholarships and a million dollars for athletics to be used within a certain amount of time. And then with any of the remaining funds, those were to go into the scholarship fund. And then came the Kaufmans, more money for scholarships. And the Angersons, who helped develop our science program. The Smiths, the Lintots, the Shaws, and the Chehalis Foundation, and the Smith Family Foundation. Many people don't live here anymore, but they still contribute to our community, and we find that absolutely amazing. Every year, or I should say, excuse me, every month at our board meetings, we have to accept donations. And you can't believe every month the amount of donations that we get from individuals and from, um, from commun the community. In addition, we have the PTA for our elementaries, activators for our middle school athletics, Booster clubs galore for our high school students, athletics, music, robotics, forensics, and that's just to name a few. We have our community partners, Chehalis Parks and Rec, I-5 Toyota, Awesome Ford, Mike and Sue Austin School Supplies, Boys and Girls Club, Kiwanis, Rotary, Sertoma, Twin Star, United Way. All of these are part of our schools and help us with our needs. We also have volunteers and mentors. If you helped volunteer to set up at all in either one of these two buildings, would you raise your hand? Because I think we had quite a few people who volunteered. <laughs> the list goes on and on. And we think that maybe we're not in a unique community, but we are. My oldest daughter came to graduation this year it was her first uh, graduation since she graduated 25 years ago. When it was over, she said to my husband and myself, you know, we didn't appreciate what we had when we were in school here. She said, we thought all communities were as giving as Chehalis is. She said, and we found out they're not. She put it on her Facebook page and the comments that came in were exactly the same. 
People all over don't realize what a special community this is. Take a look around. Take a look at the swimming pool, our library, our athletic complex and Penny Playground. I can't thank you enough. My husband and I can't thank you enough. At one point we thought maybe we'd move on to somewhere else and we're so glad we didn't. Our daughters were raised here. They appreciate coming from Chehalis. Have great pride when you say, I live or I graduated from Chehalis, Washington, because we really are a unique community. And thank you, doesn't even begin to tell you what a wonderful life we've had here. And we hope the same for our fellow students. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Now a few words from our superintendent, Superintendent Ed Rothlin. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome. It was, believe it or not, in 2014 that a dream became a vision when the generous donation of this property from Gail and Carolyn Shaw and the family, along with a generous approval of a bond issue by the Shayla School District taxpayers to build in these schools to replace Cascade 1922 and Ari Bennett 1928. We put together a great team of people you're gonna I'm gonna introduce to you in a minute. Uh, designers, engineers, contractors. We gathered staff members and community members for input and I think we we built buildings that met and satisfied our expectations and the educational needs of our students and we should be very pleased with what we have and best news is and where's heather my my finance person best news is on schedule and under budget that's right <laughs> you've met our board president vicky daniels i'd like to introduce to you the other leaders of our team uh, board Vice President, Colleen State. Colleen, if you'd stand, please. Board members, Joe Clark and Dr. Brian Roberts. Please give them a hand. The other members of the team are, are people we, we didn't meet until after we passed the bond. And uh, after the ribbon cutting today, we're, we're probably not going get, to get a chance to see them for a while. And that's the uh, general contractors and the architects that, that joined our community over the past five years. And we were very, very pleased with the relationship and the partnership that we had with them. Uh, we, were, we were a great team. We worked through some, some problem issues, but at the same time, uh, I really think uh, they, they felt good about what they, what they accomplished and, and we're very pleased. Forma Construction, I can't say enough about them. The team that we had was great. We were able to keep the same team on both buildings. Uh, they had to leave. Curtis, are you here? Curtis? Raise your hand. Curtis with Forma. I, I thought somebody was dealing. Thank you very much. For, to Curtis and Dan Igebrod, who had to leave. Also, Chris and Ashley from McGranahan, I know you're here, and I'm gonna, there you are in the back. Thank you, you and the whole team there. And to say a few words, is from McGranahan is the person we've lived with for the last, oh boy, a couple years anyway. And um, that is uh, Mark Burquist, to say a few words. Thank you, Ed. Uh, so I'll be brief. I really have, I think, three things to share with you. Um, this is, first of all, this has been a, a great um, experience. We, we really had a team, contractor, architects, consultants, subcontractors, and the school district uh, that uh, partnered. And we're, as Ed said, we worked through problems. You know, there, there's always problems when you're building a project you know you build a home let alone uh, a couple of schools and y you face decisions that you really didn't think you were going to have to make when you started out and so uh, we had a great team uh, working on this job I've done this a long time I've worked with a number of school districts on the west side of the mountains here in the state of Washington uh, a number of small school districts a couple large school districts I really enjoyed working here in Chehalis. 
um, the first of three things, I have a personal connection to Chehalis through my wife, uh, who I've been married to for 41 years. Her dad, my father-in-law, attended uh, school, public school here in Chehalis uh, in his middle school and high school years, right before World War II. And when he graduated, he hopped on a bus and he went down to Florida where he was inducted into the Navy. And he went off to the uh, South Seas uh, to spend his time there during the war. Uh, his mom, my wife's maternal grandmother, uh, was born in Chehalis. Her father had homesteaded uh, at the beginning of uh, the 20th century um, outside of Chehalis. And, you know, I moved out here from Chicago all over four, almost 40 years ago, and I never would have guessed that I would wind up in Chehalis <laughs> working in a town um, that I had some connection to. Uh, second thing I want to share that's a fact about the, the job here that, um, you know, it, to me it's the most interesting thing about it. Uh, and um, that is we wound up having to replace a lot of the existing soils, which are very clay, and so they aren't suitable. They can't be used for uh, to, to bear up under structure when they're wet, which is most of the year. So they had to be replaced, a lot of the soils here. They're good for making bricks, but not for supporting buildings and roadways. So under the roadways here and under the buildings, there's a lot of structural fill. Much of that structural fill came from a pile along the highway south of here that was dredged out of the Toon River after Mount St. Helens eruption. So, interesting fact. The last thing I want to share with you is just more thanks uh, for some particular people with whom I worked. Um, starting with our, again, with our contractors, Dan Eggbrod and Kurt, and their superintendent, Rick, uh, Alex, another project engineer, their whole team. They were very helpful, and um, we got into a couple of uh, arguments with them, but we were able to resolve them. And um, it was Forma's A team, as far as I'm concerned, and it was very fortunate for us here. Um, I'd also like to thank um, the folk that I worked with closely from the district Ed, Mary Lou Bissett, Heather, uh, Gladys Mendez Mendoza, if she's here, um, everybody from the district, uh, but especially these who I met with regularly. Uh, we're, we're right on top of questions and issues. And I can tell you, um, along with them, I think your school board has been just a great support in making wise decisions from start to finish. This job started out as a renovation and an addition, and it changed uh, fairly quickly, um, talking with the school board and working it through to a new campus with new schools. And from there, it, it's everything has just gotten better. And so um, I do want to share also with, uh, with you a couple of the local contractors who, who worked with uh, Forma Construction, who I think deserve special recognition. Travers Electric, uh, the electrician on uh, Smith Elementary School, um, local electricians and really interested in doing everything they could to uh, bring the po project in according to the budget that we had and the time frame. And then also uh, Midway Underground was the site work contractor for both projects. Um, they're, they're local guys, they're not in Chehalis, but they're local. And uh, I, I, I gotta tell you, they were fantastic. It was really good to have them on this project. And um, I think they looked at this as, well, this, gee, this project is in our backyard and um, it's, we better uh, look at it that way and do the very best that we can for the school district, and they did. 
And so, um, with that, am I going to introduce Brett? Okay. Thank you. Forty years removed from Chicago, and Mark still has that great Chicago accent. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. All right, I want to go ahead and bring up Catherine Shaw. Let's get Catherine around. Let's have her. What a, what a beautiful campus and a wonderful gathering here today. So good to see old friends and to meet some, some new friends. I know I speak on behalf of my siblings, Larry Shaw, Cindy Shaw, and Rebecca Cussman, who are now gonna stand up and wave to you. <laughs> I know I speak on behalf of them when I say how pleased we are to have played a part in this campus and how honored we are to celebrate with, here with you today. I wish my parents, Gail and Carolyn Shaw, could be here with us today. Vicki, you didn't set a very good example. <laughs> they would be thrilled to see the amazing schools here and the transformation of this property into a beautiful campus. They would also be excited about the opportunities that these schools and the other district resources are going to provide for the Chehalis students. My parents believed and drilled into our heads that a rich educational experience was the key to a bright future for both the student and the community. But more than anything, my mom and dad would be so happy to see all of you and how the community they loved came together to make this all happen. My parents purchased this property in the 1950s, not long after moving to Chehalis. They called it Chehalis Homes and had plans to develop it in the future. During our childhood, my siblings and I had some mixed feelings about this parcel of land. Think, I think they'll agree with me on this. They, and I, I'm only gonna share two of those. I, we probably have many more, but our Sunday drives often consisted of driving around this property and the industrial park. <laughs> well, my dad enthusiastically, the, uh, those of you that know him know how enthusiastic he could be, enthusiastically pointed out the new buildings, the new businesses, and sites for future development. You can imagine how exciting this was for us <laughs> when what we wanted to do was head for the beach or the mountain, which we did sometimes too. But. Another not so fond memory for me is wearing work gloves on a few hot summer days and pulling tansy ragwort, that lovely yellow invasive species from the area right actually where we are sitting today. My dad said he was hiring my, my high school boyfriend and me to do it, but I, I'm not remembering the payment. But. <laughs> my mom and dad had various plans for this property over the years. As, you prob as those of you who know my dad, he always had big plans for everything. We wondered what would happen to Shahela's homes or what we later called legend oaks because of the, the oak trees in the distance. Then several years ago, we started hearing about the school district's interest in the property. We heard about my dad's talks with Ed Rothlin and Jay Vanderstoop. I know Buck Hubbard was in there cheering, cheering them on and others. My dad was enthusiastic about the possibility of using this land to further education. He envisioned an educational campus with new schools and room for growth in the future. My parents were also truly inspired by the amazing contributions to the school district and the community from Oren Smith and his family and Jim Lintot. Thank you so much. That just got my dad raring to go to hear about what you guys were doing. Shortly after my dad passed away, 
Our family was pleased to further his vision by contributing this property to the school district. We were then delighted to hear how the community passed a bond measure to help fund construction of the new schools. As I look around here today, I know my dad's vision for this property is, has been surpassed. And I thank this extraordinary community for making it happen. Mr. Jay Vanderstoop. Now, Jay's a familiar face in our community, and he's uh, always been a tremendous supporter of the Chehala School District, um, as well as a close friend of the Smith family. So, I'll present Mr. Jay Vanderstoop. So, my heart is very full, and Catherine and Vicki, I might join you at, at any moment here. These stories touch lots of things in all of our hearts deeply. Orrin Smith's story is proof that the American dream is real. The American dream has two parts. And the first part is that it doesn't matter here if you're a girl or a boy. It doesn't matter if your parents are poor or wealthy. It doesn't matter your skin color or the color of your hair. It doesn't matter. <laughs> If you go to the right church or no church at all, in this country, you have the freedom to chart your own path and make your own way. That's the first half of the American dream. Warren Smith came from a low-income family here in Chehalis. His family did not have extra money. If he was starting school, here now next week in this school he would qualify for free and reduced lunch and under the state guidelines he would be called an at-risk student that's where he started when he was a junior in high school people in the community and teachers here said you need to go to college and he said they might as well have said you're going you need to go to mars because that was completely beyond the scope of his experience or what he had imagined for himself up until that time. But of course, he did. And he went to Centralia College for two years, then he went to University of Washington, and then he went to Harvard Business School. And then in his career, he went to start work for Starbucks. And when he took over as the CEO and president of Starbucks, there were 45 stores in Seattle. And when he left, there were 10,000 worldwide. Wow. And when he retired, quote unquote, he went on the board of the Walt Disney Corporation, where he was the lead director, and then also the Nike Corporation, and he was a regent at the University of Washington because of his passionate belief in the value and the opportunity of education. And he would be the first one to tell you, if he were standing here, that he didn't do this alone. He did it with the support of a loving family and a powerful, strong mother. And he did it with the support of this community. There's a quote I want to read. A few years ago, the University of Washington School of Business did an article on Oren. And there's a quote at the end of the article, lots, a lot of mention about him growing up in Chehalis and how that influenced his life and career and his characteristics. Ann McGonagoyle worked with Orrin at Starbucks, and in the article she said this, earnest, compassionate, humble, a principled leader, and a man of exceptional integrity. That's the essence of Orrin Smith. You could take the kid out of Chehalis and send him to the University of Washington, Harvard Business School, and the heights of business success, but you could never take Chehalis out of the kid. Vicki's already mentioned, you look at the library we have, probably the most beautiful public library that any town of this size has in the United States. You look at the pool, the rebuilt pool, and you know 
that that would not have happened without Oren and his family. And I'd like to thank again Kevin and Vicki and Janet and Karen and yes, even you, Dick. Thank you <laughs> very much. And it's the same thing with what we call in Chehalis the Student Achievement Initiative. That would not have happened without Oren Smith. The average high school graduation rate for public schools in Washington State is 79%. And last year in Chehalis, it was 95%. There were 200 students who graduated three mo two months ago from WF West High School. 199 of them were admitted to college. And in case you're wondering, one kid said, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to apply. <laughs> and that would not have happened, not only without the financial contributions, but the business planning focus that Oren Smith brought and Kevin has brought to this effort. Others did the work, right? The teachers in this amazing district did the work. The counselors did the work. The school administrators, supported by the school board, did the work. And that's another thing Oren Smith would be the first person to say. He would say, I didn't do the work. But take him out of this equation, and I believe, I know, these things would not have happened. Oren Smith's support is a gift to our community. And it is a gift to our children that will last for generations. And that's the second part of the American dream. The second part of the American dream says, you got where you are with help from others and generations who've gone before you. And now you have a duty to give back to help the next generation. And by any measure, Oren Smith filled both parts of the American dream. Isaac Newton said, the great physicist before Einstein, said, if I see further than other people, it's because I stand on the shoulder of giants. And Vicki mentioned some of these Chehalis giants. And the Shaws and Gale are certainly one of those. And Jim Lintott, who's here today, and his family, Jim Lintott, whose story is also just as much a measure of the American dream as Oren's, the Kaufmans, the Wess, and all those people shared a faith. They shared a faith in the teachers who they never met and the students who they will never meet. They shared a faith that they could come through this community and rise as high as their talent and hard work could take them. These two schools are testaments, proof, that the American dream is alive and real. And I want to say to the students who are here, who are going to start next week in either one of these schools, for the rest of your life, people may say to you, you can't make it. They may say, you don't come from an important family or Maybe they'd say, you're just from a small town and you can't make it. And for the rest of your life, you have an answer. Right there. You can say, that's not true. I went to Oren Smith Elementary School and he grew up in Chehalis just like me. And he came from the same kind of family and had the same kind of grow up, growing up that I had. And he made it and I can make it. And you're not going to stand in my way, and I can rise to the top just like he did. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. That was fantastic. We're really winding down here. I, I want to take a moment just to uh, express my gratitude for everyone coming out tonight and our fantastic speakers and just the, the love that we're feeling from this, this community. Um, it took a lot just to put this on, and I do want to, there's so many people that were involved, but I'd like to just give a quick shout out to uh, Assistant Principal Rachel Dorsey, who's right over there. Thank you, Rachel. 
And I certainly also want to recognize an amazing staff. So if you are a staff member at Orange Smith Elementary, any staff member, can you stand up? <laughs> These guys have been squinting in the sun for the last 20 minutes, so nice job. Thank you, guys. This special group of professionals have done an amazing job of, of getting us all moved in and settled and transitioning to our new school, our beautiful new school. And these guys, day in and day out, they show kindness, a love for kids, and a drive for changing lives. And for that, I am grateful, as are all of us. So can we give them a round of applause one more time? I want to end on this. that uh, We have a quote, and it's pretty cool because it's actually on as you walk into the building. It's a quote from Warren Smith. It says, set your goals high and always do your very best. And that's our mantra, not only for staff, but for students. Again, thank you so much for taking the time out to celebrate with us. And we're going to end with our choir, who did a fantastic job earlier. And as the choir is singing, um, I ask the, the folks right here and some of our VIPs and school board to make our way over. And we're going to have a quick ribbon cutting. And about by the time the song is over, the ribbon cutting will be done. And then what we're going to do is you have an option to head right over to the barbecue, if you're hungry right now. Great. Or you can head right into the school for the, the tour and the greeting the teachers and just checking out the brand new facility. So thanks again. If those people want to make their way over there, that would be great. And Mrs. Gilbert, thank you very much. Kids, good job. Thank you so much.